All right, good evening. Um, let's see. We are in the midst of the final assembly. And I have the bottom of the engine all done with the crankshaft put in there. Um, what am I doing now? Well, just a few moments ago, you probably uh, watched my video of me putting the spiral locks um, in, the, uh, in the pistons here to the connecting rods, all right? Now it's time, now it's time to put some rings on the pistons, all right? And these four I've done already, one, two, three, four. And you could see the uh, the end result. Um, it's uh, on these uh, Summit Pro LS uh, pistons that I'm using. <clears throat> so anyway, um, before I did any video, um, I wanted to practice. And I did the first four. I still need to do four more. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do those uh, last four on camera. But a couple things I want to show you that um, is really important um, when it comes to um, getting the piston rings right. Now, <clears throat> every time you buy a set of rings and pistons, it should come with, um, well, at least the manufacturer in most cases, should include a ring installation guideline. The key thing here is follow the manufacturer's instructions, okay? Every set of rings you buy should have instructions. Follow them, okay? And <clears throat> last thing I'll point out on these instructions and of course, I've already gone through the process to uh, gap them, and, and I got that all taken care of. Okay, so the gap's all done and good and ready. All right, but here is the uh, explanation of where the openings to the rings go. Gosh, that I gotta see what's wrong with this camera. That ring, oh, that dark spot there. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, you could see, um, we'll talk more about this here in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna take a pause here, put this uh, GoPro on my head, and, um, and, um, and then I'll be right back and you could watch me uh, put some rings on these uh, pistons, okay? <clears throat> All right. So we've got um, we've got the uh, fifth cylinder piston here, and this B just stands for this points towards the back, and um, so um, and then remember the well, you know what? Since this is in the back, let me go ahead and just mark on here the front, just to for consistency's sake. Five F. All right. All right, so this is gonna to go towards the front. All right, now, the first situ the first step here is that we wanna put the, we wanna put the shelf on here. Um, and let me just go ahead and put the shelf on here and then I'll explain what the shelf does, okay? There's a little dimple right here on the shelf and <clears throat> that dimple has to go in one of these gaps right here. All right, so I'm going to put a little oil. I'm going to lube this up just lightly. Now you'll notice I'm not ringing. I'm not using ring. Um, I'm not using ring um, pliers or whatever those things are called to help you put the rings on. These things are flexible enough where you can just do it by hand. So uh, so anyway, make sure that dimple's on the bottom. All right, here's the dimple. So we're just going to have it so that it sits right here and then just basically go ahead and uh, just work it around. Okay. And again, I'm not doing anything here that the Summit website doesn't uh, already recommend. They said you can put these on by hand. Now, what does this little um, <clears throat> shelf do? Well, it, <laughs> it, it sits, it basically, you know, it, it, creates like a little shelf so that this opening right here, um, so that oil doesn't seep through and, and, and seep through, um, and, and run down, um, past there. And it basically just allows the, the, um, uh, get the rings to just sit on top of that. Okay. So you just want to make sure that this is obviously that it's, uh, laying on the, uh, bottom, if you see what I'm doing right here. Okay. 
And then finally, you want to make sure that dimple can be seen. Where's the dimple? Here's the dimple right here. You see that dimple right there? It has to be somewhere in this space here, okay? And what that does is this dimple actually, while the engine's, you know, running, if these rings rotate, it doesn't allow it to rotate beyond here, okay? Because the last thing you want is the opening in this ring to line up with this gap, okay? With this um, <clears throat> uh, piston um, floating pin bore. You don't want it to be, um, the, the gap to be in there. So anyway, here's the dimple, okay? So we're ready to go ahead and put um, the rest on. Now, <clears throat> again, here's the instruction showing uh, the front of the engine should be going this way, right? So if we look, uh, I got 5F for front, all right? And then what we want to do, the first thing we want to do is put in the uh, expander end gap range here on this side. So the expander ring, um, the end gap should be somewhere over here, all right? So I'm going to go to number five. I have these all labeled out. I'll go ahead and put a little... A little bit of oil on here. Uh, all right. And then this thing is really super flexible. So nothing special you got to do here other than just put it on here. All right. And these things go on so easy. I mean, normally it shouldn't even give me this much trouble. <laughs> all right. There it goes. It's in there. All right. So just for sanity's sake, and you want to make sure that it's above... Well, or actually, yeah, above this shelf. Okay, so it looks good all the way around. Let's put the piston back in the vise here so that the front is facing forward. Now we want to put the bottom oil rail underneath that expander. Okay, and then the, the gap should point toward 10 o'clock. All right, now number five. <clears throat> I will point out that these... Um, this part here, the shelf, the oil wipers or oil um, oil rails and the expander, they can it, I can mix and mesh match them. In other words, they're not custom for each piston. Uh, what's a, how's another way to say this? Um, in other words, the only ones that I had to do the gap for were these ones, the top and the second one. All right, so I uh, hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so let's go back in here and go ahead and put a little oil on here. And remember, the <clears throat> bottom oil rail end gap should go at 10 o'clock. So we're going to go here, and remember, it has to go above the shelf, but below the expander. Okay, and I'm just going to flip it over and just feed it in so that it goes above the shelf, but below the expander. All right. So how how do we do? We did good. All right. So forward, back in. All right. The top oil rail or wiper goes. Uh, the gap goes towards seven o'clock. And here it is, right here. We're gonna go ahead and now. Where does this one go? It goes on top of the <clears throat> on top of the um, expander. So let's go ahead and fit that in there. All right. And then we're going to work it around. Yeah, see, no special tools are required to put these rings on. These things are so flexible. All right, <clears throat> so let's verify our work. The shelf goes on the bottom. The dimple is in the middle, OK? We look at front. The uh, rail, or the expander rather, opening is over here. And then the bottom one is sitting at 10 o'clock and the top one is sitting at seven o'clock, all right? So I'm pleased with that result right there. All right, so the last two rings, all right? <clears throat> we have the uh, second ring end gap needs to go to nine o'clock and the top ring gap go, needs to go to three o'clock. So the second, gap is our second ring is this one now this is the one that has the marking on it right see that marking right there that little dimple tells us that this should face up 
And I have these labeled because I gapped them. Okay, so this one's labeled number five. All right, so that's, I'm gonna take my label off, put a little oil on here, and we're gonna go ahead and oil that up a little bit. Again, here's the groove, and we can verify it because there's that little lip. See that little lip right there? All right, that needs to be pointing down. This dot points up, and this second ring end gap needs to go to three o'clock. So we're just gonna start it right here, three o'clock. And we're gonna put it in there, right over top. Sometimes it'll get stuck in one of the other gaps or grew or um, but you can just. Usually, I wouldn't recommend what I just did there using a tool to get it. Just go ahead and use your hands so you don't scratch or damage anything. This one's being a little bit tricky. All right, so there you have it. That's at three o'clock. All right, and if you want to make sure it's seated okay, just go ahead and spin it around and then just you know, then that'll at least let you know that it is seated in the in the groove. All right, so that's the second ring. The top ring I've got here labeled number five again. I made sure these were gapped, and the top ring it doesn't matter which points up and which points down. Okay, they're the same. So a little bit of oil, lube this up a little bit. This this time this goes at nine o'clock. Top top groove. All right, so stick that in there. We're just gonna come right around and look how nicely that settles in there. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, right? The problem, you never want to line up the holes for the top, top and bottom, okay? They have to be 180 degrees apart, all right? So there you have it, <clears throat> that's the top. And at this point, at this point, it looks like I have number cylinder, Five, number five done, all right? So one last time, we're gonna make sure the shelf is there properly seated, you know, with the dimple in the opening. We've got the shelf, we've got the bottom uh, ring, we've got the expander, we've got the top oil ring, we've got the number two um, ring, and we've got the top ring. And they, um, they all seem to be uh, in the right orientation, okay? So that's how you do it, um, pretty easy. Um, you know, I spent what, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes explaining the process. Once you get going with these, you can do each one in about five to 10 minutes. And there you have it. Again, just to reiterate, make sure you use manufacturer instructions.